nation, unto God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to just say that uh, Council Holbrook is absent tonight because she's got that cold that's been going around that most of us have been battling with. Uh, roll call. Councilor Donovan? Here. Councilor Katarina? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Councilor Benedict? Here. Chairman Sullivan? Here. Uh, okay, we'll start with uh, general public comments. Three minutes, name and address, please. Good evening, uh, Katie Foley, 3 Lucky Lane. Um, I do have just a few quick comments this evening. The first was, and I'm bummed Jessica's not here, I wanted to update my clink count bag, or my clink bag count. I have turned in three full bags. I'm not sure where the rest of the council is or if you guys should have a bar graph out in the hallway, maybe keeping track of who has turned in how many. Um, first comment I wanted to, or piece I'd like to point you to this evening is just in reference to a supporting strategy that I included in my minority uh, report a few weeks back. Um, as I look down to our neighbors in the south and I see what's happening with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the fish <coughs> in Saco, um, I'm very concerned. It turns my stomach, quite frankly, and uh, I hope that you guys are also paying attention to that. Uh, these kinds of these federal agencies cannot continue to legally impose their will on lo local municipalities to legislate the social behavior of their people. If they could, they would. Uh, instead, they're resorting to picking off small towns one by one. And uh, honestly, it makes me think we shouldn't give up a thing in our animal control ordinance because just like the bully on the playground who keeps coming back for more, they will surely come back here. I guess what I really want to know, and maybe some of you have the very same question that I do, is um, that what does it actually take for them to respect the citizens of the voice of a town and respect the local laws uh, that we choose? Um, so remember uh, when I said to you, if you, if you want to go uh, fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. Uh, I'm encouraging you to reach out to our neighbors in Saco and think about a regional strategy uh, in terms of how U.S. Fish and Wildlife is attempting to legislate our towns. Uh, my second point is in, regards, in response to an email from this afternoon. Um, it uh, spoke to process and talked a little bit about history, uh, process not mattering, and, and that's in the past. Why should we worry about that? Um, this is very concerning to me because uh, over and over again, uh, after the election, I was told that we only won the election because people in town didn't like or support the process. Um, so which is it? Does process matter or does it not matter? Does integrity matter or does it not matter? Uh, you can't tell me on one hand that it doesn't and then have it the other way. Um, so process and integrity do matter uh, and 100% of the time. Um, and if you don't believe that, um, I'm not sure uh, if you should be serving our town. And last but not least, um, I talked a few minutes back about the hardest thing to do, especially in a public forum, is to admit a mistake and, s and say you were wrong. Uh, but that's what I feel like I have to do tonight, and that's what I'm, so I'm here to tell you I made a big mistake. And one of those mistakes was in my angst, uh, because my life is busy, um, to try to help come to a solution. I, I maybe maybe went too fast. Is that my time? I can't yeah. tell. Yes. It is. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Just finish it off. Okay. So my mistake is this: it was presumptuous for me to to think that without a formal election with my dog's members that I can speak for them. And so what I intend to do over the next couple of weeks is take a deep breath, a step back, give them that opportunity to make me their official leader, uh, and then let them vote on what they want to do. I understand your process is underway and you've got to do what you want to do. I respect that. Um, and I will continue to keep the channels of communication open. Thank you. Thanks. Next, anyone else? every other week discussion for three minutes. Uh, Liam Summers, uh, Holmes Road. I thought tonight would be the first chance to review the council's uh, proposed ordinance revisions and I'm glad to see that we're not discussing it actually because I hope that means you've decided to take this additional time to revise certain portions of it to more accurately reflect the vote that was uh, taken on the first referendum. 
But with that, I would like to step away uh, for a minute from the issue at hand and instead draw focus to what I truly believe is the most critical component in all of this, and that's ethics. I would simply ask that each of you take a moment to reflect on your decision-making process to this point and ask yourself, are you comfortable that those decisions were made in a transparent and ethical manner? Are you confident that those decisions would stand up to scrutiny were they to be subjected to it? And are you comfortable that whatever support you're providing a fellow counselor is well-earned and merited and truly reflects your position? I think Counselor Benedict calls it the they from theyville situation. We don't want to lump everybody into the they portion. We want you each to have your own voice. You are all keenly aware that whatever decisions you make will be subject to such scrutiny. So this interim time is critical to ensure you are each well informed regarding the manner in which this situation has been managed by your peers and that you as a counselor are not getting lumped into that general pool should there be areas of ethical misconduct brought to light later on. I hope that I can count on each of you to do a proper level of discovery into all aspects of the management of this process. Ask those hard questions that uh, your fellow counselor, of your fellow counselors, and then decide for yourself what you believe to have been ethical. Lastly, I will close with a request that Counselor Donovan recuse himself willingly from any vote on the proposed ordinance derived by the ad hoc committee. As a beach area resident of Higgins Beach and a sitting member of the ad hoc committee, he has a very specific interest in the outcome of the vote that I believe is a significant conflict of interest that creates questions about any vote taken. If Councillor Donovan declines, I would ask the committee to take this up as a matter of procedure. We all want to ensure that this vote is taken as fair, unbiased, and can withstand any questions of, was it done ethically? Until we get past that hurdle, this does not go away. Thank you for your time. Pamela Rovner for King Street, Pine Point. During the ad hoc committee, the subject of a special tag for dogs was brought up by the one council member that was part of the committee. He thought having the dog owners buy a special tag for the dog was a good way to control off-leash dogs. He said that it was a privilege to be able to have your dog off-leash on the beach, and if the dog misbehaved, that tag would be pulled and the owner would never be able to come back to the beach with that dog again. I read a newspaper article similar to the dog tag privilege, and I'd like to share that. The same counselor as a private citizen was involved in this. On Higgins Beach, this person of means bought a beautiful house that was alongside of a street that allowed parking. This person of means didn't like that the surfers were parking there. I think he said it was a party scene every night. The Excuse person, me, um, what? we're sticking to the subject. You're, this is the subject. About. I'm going to You're get going there. going into a different realm of parking. I'm not. <clears throat> I'm going to get there. I will tie it together very okay. quickly. <clears throat> he wanted um, the fact. This man of means tried his best to get rid of that parking. The fact is, according to him, parking on the street is a privilege. He wanted to charge sixty-five dollars for a parking pass. Then, if they misbehaved. We can pull their pass, and they can never park on the street again. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? After the parking ban was denied, the fact is he got the town council and the current town manager to use taxpayers' money to build a six-foot-high and 100-foot-long wooden excuse shed. excuse me, you're out of order. I am you're not. You're attacking a fellow counselor. I haven't council. mentioned anybody's name. You're out of order. Sit down. You know, you're this done. is unfair. Back. This has been unfair from the Back. beginning. And it is still unfair. You're out of order. Sit down. You are out of order. Oh, really? Yes. What are you in a movie? No, but you um, are out of order. Who's next? Anyone next? <clears throat> there will be no personal attacks on the council. You speak to the subject that you want to speak to. Period. Good evening, Joanne Mahoney, 18 Pillsbury Drive. Good evening, council. My comments tonight are based on what I heard at the March 5th workshop by a counselor and the articles in the recent papers. I am aware some of the articles may not have gotten it completely correct, so I wait for your final draft. I walked away March 5th thinking, oh no, how did we get to this again? And when I sought the council, prior to Council Donovan's proposal, 
we were heading in the right direction to a fair approach to all. When council has something put before them, by democratic process, you vote, and the majority rules. The same should have applied from the very beginning after a 73% majority vote. From a special referendum returned to this council the expectation to go back to the original dog ordinance. Please give credence and uphold this expectation within the decisions you will make very soon. As my elected representatives, I want to have confidence in you, knowing you are respecting the majority, and more importantly, the will of the majority. The latest proposal is just not acceptable. It will cause confusion and set up in place limitations far more than where any of this needs to be. Suggested protected areas on hypothetical locations of nests that may or may not appear will create limitations not necessary. If this is truly about protecting the plover and not a special interest agenda to get dogs off the beach, then protect the plover. When and where they are actually nesting. Please demarcate those nests. Better signage, better fencing, better enforcement. That's the right road to be on. I cannot say enough times we are already Scarborough and Western Beach designated as no dog beaches, available at all times for those that would rather not be with dogs. Scarborough Mosh is a wonderful sanctuary for birds and bird lovers. Pine Point and Higgins Beach should remain, a dog friendly, should remain as dog friendly as possible. These beaches provide a way of life for many that include pets in their daily lives and their activities. My concern is this panel is going to consider implementing winter hours, even though winter hours cannot be based on the pretext of protecting the plover, and that's why we're here but rather an effort by a minority group to remove dogs from the beaches. Remember, Scarborough and Western are already dog free. There are very few pe people on the beaches during the winter months, except the regulars that frequent, myself included. And some days I don't encounter a person or a person with a dog. Why overreach again? The majority of people I've spoken to who are not following this cl as closely as some, think this was resolved with the vote back in December, and yet here we are debating and trying to convince Council how important it is to maintain our rights. I'm almost done. One has to wonder on the judgment of the panel if it continues to make decisions to drive to create more limitations on the people of this town rather than to strive for the solutions to maintain our maximum freedoms. Oddly enough, some of us the group who actually would be your best advocates and ambassadors on the beach to protect the plover are the dog boats who have been involved from the beginning who are fully aware of the issues, myself included. Make this easier for the locals and the visitors to comply with. Do not set up something and set us up to fail. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Suzanne Foley Ferguson, uh, 331 Black Point Road. Um, I just want to get this on the record. Um, the town of Saco and the Army Corps in Saco is getting the same pressure from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that the town of Scarborough did. And I want to get on the record that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service office is out of control. <laughs> Our beaches are not wildlife sanctuaries. They do have wildlife sanctuaries. One's called the Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge. It's in our town as well. There's over 500 acres of that. Our beaches are public beaches. Now, last meeting, you guys talked about dividing the beaches, and I'm not going to comment really on that because the papers reported that it's going back to these beach release type dates, which uh, if a bird crosses a line, that um, then the whole beach will be blocked off. I don't know if that's true or not because I haven't seen the ordinance, but if it is true, I have to air my concern and tell you why. We don't want the U.S. Fish or Maine Audubon making decisions about our beaches because they misrepresent the facts. And I, this is the fact I want on the record. From your civil proceeding document of the notice of violation, it states, on April 12, 2004, the service sent a letter to the respondent, the town, which repeated the importance of keeping dogs leashed. And I'm skipping some, but and reminded the respondent, the town, that as recently as 2003, a piping plover was killed by a dog on one of their beaches. 
That's a legal document, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, saying that a dog killed a plover. Now I'm going to go back to the report of that plover, the incident report. Maine Audubon 2003 report. A second carcass was found on Pine Point. Both crow and dog tracks were seen in the vicinity of the exclosure, but not in the exclosure, as well as human footprints. It was originally assumed that the adult attempted to lure the crow away from its nest, but our initial assessment may not be of much value since determining the exact predator is difficult. We sent the bird to the University of Michigan. We heard a plausible alternative theory, however, from a law enforcement officer after he examined the carcass and heard the report. He suggested that an attack on the adult plover might have been from a dog on the beach. He hypothesized, these are not my words, hypothesized alternative plausible, plausible theory that the human footprints came from a dog's owner who tossed the carcass back. Tossed the carcass back into the exclosure after the dog had inadvertently killed it. He's got this wild, crazy theory that the, this person th killed the bird, threw it back into the exclosure, then the U.S. Fish and Wildlife takes that and says it as fact. A bird was not killed in 2003. We still don't know if there's one now. We haven't seen the report. I am very tired, and I want my counselors to stick up to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Please, please work with SACO. Contact LePage. Contact your, your thing. They're out of control. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Peter Hayes, 5 Union Hill Lane, Scarborough. And I, a little different event. I've been in this community 13 years. I've never attended one of these meetings. I've always thought the town council did a great job of representing our interests. I am frustrated and appalled by how this council has handled this whole issue. I do not understand in a democracy, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give kudos to, to Mr. Benedict, who I have sent emails. He and I have had back and forth. We've agreed to disagree, but in a respectful and civil way. I have sent emails to all of you. Some of you I've never heard from. Others I've heard, I don't agree with you and I don't need to talk to you. I'm a taxpayer, and I don't understand how if you can send something to a special ballot and three quarters of those voting say they don't want more restrictive laws, how you feel in your arrogance that you know better than the residents what we should have. I encourage you to think about that. When the, a democracy says you're supposed to represent the majority interest, not special interests, not your own agendas, the town has spoken. And it's clear the town does not support. I mean, the, this is just a manufactured issue, as you just heard. There's no evidence that dogs are involved at all. So again, I have never attended one of these things, but I'm appalled. You are supposed to work for us, the town residents. You're supposed to represent our interest. We have expressed our interest. You have completely ignored them, disrespected them, and frankly, you have disseminated so much misinformation. I'm appalled at how you've handled this. I hope you consider what the town has already voted on and put that into your considerations as we move forward. This is just appalling. This is not how a democracy is supposed to work. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Amy Dorenzo, 3 Lucky Lane. Um, seems to me when all of these controversies began, our focus was on how are we going to protect the plovers that are currently here in Scarborough. And somewhere along the line, it feels like we shifted our focus from how do we protect our current plovers to how do we make our town more of a sanctuary and attract new plovers and grow the plover population, and particularly on our beaches um, by creating sanctuary-like areas. Um, my question for the council would be, what is going to happen if we are, we are successful in growing the plover population? And instead of dealing with one or two pairs, as we've been dealing with, which obviously has created some controversies already in this town, what is going to happen if two or three years from now we are so successful because we've now designated sanctuary areas in our beaches that we now have 30 or 40 pairs of plovers? What are we going to be doing then? Are we going to be saying, okay, Taurus, you've got to stay away now because we can't have people in 30 pairs of plovers in the same location. So I would just ask you, 
to, to give that some thought about where we're headed in this direction. Um, we all want to see the plovers be safe, but if we attract plovers to an unsafe, I mean, when they, when they come by in April, for instance, and they look down and they say, oh, look, the beach is empty. What a great place to nest. And then, they, then July hits, and there are thousands of people everywhere trampling all over the place. And it's not a safe place for these guys. So if we grow the, population to, uh, the plover population to a point, I see that as setting these plovers up to fail. Um, and I would just like you to think about that if you could. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, with that, I'll close public hearing. Next, um, minutes of uh, March <coughs> uh, regular meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Is there any adjustments to the agenda? None at this time, no. None at this time. Treasurer's warrant. I have those signed. Mm -hmm. That needs to be signed. After the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Order number 1401 mm -hmm. is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the renewal request for a junkyard permit from AG, uh, A. Gagnon and E. Perry Metal located at Rigby Road. This item had been tabled back in January um, due to some outstanding issues and as noted in the memo, uh, the issues have been addressed mm -hmm. and the code yes. office uh, recommends approval. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on the permit? Seeing none, I close the hearing. In action. Council, uh, order, permit. Um, does anybody have a motion? So moved. Second. Check. Discussion. What? Seems in order. Able to January. Pardon me? Why was it tabled in January? Uh, there were issues uh, that, that the uh, facility was not in com compliance with the code, and uh, we worked with them, and subsequently they have come into co compliance, so it's back before you. No problem. There goes my chair again. All right. All in favor? Opposed? Order number 1424 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405, the zoning ordinance to add historic preservation and wildlife review standards to enable municipal capacity of DEP site law review. Don't worry about it. Hey, uh, Dan, do you have something? Sure. Yeah, in the interest of time, perhaps you could speak to the next three orders as they're related. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dan Bacon, Town Planner. Um, as the town manager suggested, the, these three orders are all related and uh, essentially have the same language in them for the same purposes. Um, and these amendments are to the zoning ordinance and our two other development review ordinances, the subdivision review and site plan review ordinances. And they're proposed in our efforts to actually receive um, municipal capacity or local review authority of a DEP development review process called Site Law, uh, which is a, a lengthy review process for larger development projects. Um, and it's in our efforts to streamline development review and eliminate some of the duplicative uh, land use review that occurs right now between the town and the state. Um, and these amendments focus on adding a historic review at the local level. Um, currently, that's done by the state when it goes through site law review, and this now, with these amendments, could be done by the planning board um, rather than the state agencies. It also adds a step for larger development projects to be reviewed by um, state inland fisheries and wildlife, and they provide advisory comments to the planning board. Um, right now, the process is that they would do that at the state level, and then DEP would incorporate those comments. Um, so, again, this is language that's mirrored in all three ordinances, and it adds the historic review um, process in that IFNW review. And once this is passed by the council, the state would give the town this municipal capacity um, so that that site law review is no longer necessary for 
larger development projects in our growth area of town. Just if I could, by way of further introduction, not in the specifics of these orders, but this is really um, has everything to do with kind of a multi-year goal the council has had to really to streamline and simplify as best we can the local development review process, uh, and really in large part due to uh, Dan's expertise and that of the staff. Uh, we're in a position to be able to apply for so-called municipal capacity. Uh, this could be a, a really big deal for the business community and those uh, coming before the planning board. Not that we change or lessen our standards, it's that we can really speed up the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may be as much as six months in, in, in for some uh, development reviews, and that could be significant for a project. So we're excited to bring this forward, and I, I just want to congratulate Dan and the staff for <coughs> really being the reason that we can even have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, the public hearing. Should we pass the motion and second? Oh, we have the public hearing. Yeah, we have that's what I was going to say. Um, anyone from the public would like to speak to order 1424? <coughs> okay, seeing none, I'll close that. Uh, motion on the floor. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Councillor, comments or discussion? Mm -hmm. Yes. I just have a question that's not meant to be laughed at by anybody, but in these <coughs> wildlife review standards, who has their input for that? The not the AFW, I know. <laughs> the State Inland Fisheries and Wildlife has review, um, and currently through site law, they have a much more comprehensive review than they would under this scenario. Under this scenario, um, they have the ability, they have a 30-day window to comment on a development project being reviewed by the town and the town's planning board, so they're advisory comments. Um, they're not... Um, they don't have regulatory authority under this scenario. So it's to get their input, um, and the planning board is the deciding body in the, in the process. Does that answer your question? So then they can come up, the IFW can come up with guidelines as they're doing with our beaches? Um, well, beaches would not likely even be a, an area reviewed. This is more for commercial development occurring in our commercial zones, a new subdivision. So this isn't geared around use of natural resources such as the beaches, the marsh, things like that. Um, so, but their advisory comments, the recommendations the state agency would have, the planning board has the ability to decide um, how they're incorporated or not in a project. Thank you. you could, uh, if I could, yeah, thank you. If I could ask just a clarifying question on that, maybe. As it stands now, do we already have IFW review on certain types of development in this town under the state laws or whatever? For yeah, planning? under site law. So it's nothing new. No, it's a it's a lesser review than today's review by the state. This that's. The whole purpose of this is site law is entirely administered by the state, and IFNW has direct decision making under that review. Now it's the jurisdiction is given to the town, but they have the ability to comment, to make recommendations. So it's less involvement than currently. So what you're saying, Dean, is they have uh, they can make a comment. It's not their decision. It's the town's decision. That this will make it the town. The planning board's decision on um, so it takes that on that decision making yes. out of their hands. It does. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyone else? <coughs> Any questions? Any questions? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none. 
Order number uh, 1425 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405B, the Site Plan Review Ordinance, to add historic preservation and wildlife review standards to enable municipal capacity of DEP site law review. Uh, did, you, yeah, did you have anything? <coughs> I didn't. No, this okay. is the Site Plan Review, the addition to that ordinance as well. Okay. Yeah. Public, public hearing. Anybody would like to speak to uh, Order 1425? Seeing none, do I have a motion from the council? Move approval. Second. Discussion? No one has anything mm. on this one. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? And none. Order number 14-26, the 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 406, the subdivision ordinance to add historic preservation and wildlife review standards to enable municipal capacity of DEP site law review. Okay, I'll open it up to public hearing. Anybody from the public like to speak on Order 1426? Okay, seeing none, I have a motion. So moved. Second. Any dis council discussion? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Order, order number 14-29 uh, is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the new request for a liquor license and a food handler's license from Sheila Maselli doing business at the Pine Point Grill LLC located at 240 Pine Point Road. This was formerly the first and last tavern. Okay, anyone like to speak to this? Order 14-29. No one? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Order. Um, Do I have a motion on the floor? So moved. Second. Council discussion? If there is none, then all question. those in Oh, Jim. Yep. Is that a question? Um, but I'm not sure of the answer. Within the town of Scott, <coughs> are we or are we not granted the ability to give out so many liquor licenses? <coughs> We don't have anything in place that would limit um, the number of liquor licenses that we The state issue. doesn't have it? No. Good question. Do these people yeah, have to check. go in front of the state to get a state license? Well, in order for them to go to that that level, the town council has to approve it. Because <coughs> they're serving liquor on, on premise, the council has to approve it. And then they move it on to the state level. Okay. Thank you. This, uh, this particular um, business, it, you know, I mean, it's changed hands, but um, they've had, I believe, liquor licenses for 15, maybe 15 years, roughly, mm. 13, okay. 15 years. Yeah, so um, it's not a new one. It's just a reinstatement. It's just hands. Pardon? Did you, it's just change right. of owners. Uh, they're changing owners again, right. Good. Good. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Opposed? None. Old business? None at this time. New business. Order number 14-30. The first reading is scheduled a second reading on the bond order for the 2014 municipal and capital improvements. Would you like me to just to introduce this? Yeah, um, I would. Yeah. For those returning counselors, you'll probably recall this about this time every year we do come forward and uh, seek bond authorization. Uh, many of these projects should be familiar to you. The vast majority were approved as part of the capital improvements budget uh, in the current fiscal year. Uh, there's one that um, the council will probably recall uh, as well, Comstock <coughs> Farm. It references a, a prior approval back in the 2003 to 2004 timeframe. I suspect that's because that was the first year of the uh, land conservation uh, bond, or second go around of the land conservation bond, and we want to expend those funds before we move to uh, later authorizations. But essentially, all of these projects have been approved uh, previously by this council or a, a uh, past council, uh, yet we do need to come back and seek your authority and, and authorization to actually um, uh, fund these projects through different, ter different terms of uh, longer-term financing. 
as opposed to being appropriated through the budget. Uh, Ruth Porter, Finance Director, is here if you have any specific questions uh, on the, uh, the technical aspects of this. Uh, but that's what we're here seeking your approval to do. Okay, do I have a motion? So move. Second. Discussion? Questions? Are, are some of these, some of these are completed already, right? Yes. So we'll, in those instances, we're paying ourselves back. We've, we've got to finance them through the course of this year. Uh, but yes, some of them are completed. Okay. So this is merely just to authorize a bond? Yes. Okay. It's authorizing the borrowing. Correct. Just to, to recall, uh, the council met uh, previous to this, this meeting in a workshop setting with its, with its auditor. Uh, there was a, some discussion around the fund balance. When we go to sell these bonds, uh, that fund balance and the, and the positive trend that we've been able to build over the last several years should come in helpful to us in terms of securing uh, the best bond rating possible, which ultimately reduces our interest expense, uh, the cost of the town. So uh, it all does tie together. Any other questions or comments? Mm. Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Mm -hmm. you must Order number 14-31 is act to approve the resolve to accept donations for the fuel assistance program. <coughs> Anything to add to that? No. Would you like to read that? Yeah, sure. <coughs> be resolved accepting donations for a fuel assistance program. Be it hereby resolved by the town council as follows that the town of Scarborough gratefully accepts the pledges and donations from the following businesses and or persons that have been collected to date to be used for the fuel assistance program. Mary Adams, James Fee, Mr. and Mrs. Michael Fontaine. And be it further resolved that each business organization and or person be recognized for their generosity, uh, generous donations as tokens of the town's appreciation. Yeah. Yes. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor. Just if I could, I heard mention from the podium about the Clink program that is an active uh, fundraising program. Uh, in addition to this sort of outright donation, um, we just checked the account today where uh, we've given out well over 100 bags. Not many have been returned. So I, I just want to take the opportunity to thank those that took a bag. Make sure you fill it and return it. Uh, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, number eight, non-action items. None. None. Okay, standing, standing and special committees, liaison reports. And we will start with um, Councilor Sinclair. Nothing to report. Councilor Blaze. Uh, we had a senior... Um, advisory board meeting the other day, but uh, nothing of significance to bring up. Council Benedict. Coastal Waters uh, had a meeting last week, and there was really nothing <coughs> of importance or decided upon at them, so that's that. Okay. No. Councilor Katerina. I'm trying to remember where I've been. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Do you want me to come back to you? <laughs> Conservation Commission uh, yes. continues um, um, to work on what we work <clears throat> on. A couple of things we're looking at continue to be the marsh migration and um, flood, possible flood zone issues and, and the like. Uh, Long-term planning, uh, long-range planning, just looking at, again, um, Gorham Road, some uh, rezoning. There will be a meeting, and I don't have it right in front of me, in April of the abutters. I happen to be one of the abutters, so I'll be there. Um, but notices will go out uh, to abutters regarding that. Um, and that's all I have to report on. I just have one question to that, and either Tom or maybe Councilor Katerina, as to um, when the um, feds were planning on scheduling that meeting for the, um, the flood maps. new oh, yeah, flood maps. Question. Yeah, I wish I could be more specific. <laughs> They've been elusive at best. Uh, they've offered to uh, participate in 
in uh, meetings via phone, which do strike, doesn't strike me as a very effective means. Um, I think their preference would be to wait till uh, the appeal process is either underway or completed, which seems, frankly, a bit backward to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. But it's been a source of some great frustration um, in, in getting, pinning them down to a particular date. And I think it's a, frankly a matter of resources. Every community would like to host a meeting, and I don't. I think they're fearful of agreeing to one for for fear that uh, they'll be out every night of the week for the next six weeks. Uh, it's not a good excuse, but that's no. That's what they did. The they did it on us. Right. We're getting all the questions. Right. True. And I, I can't add anything more to that. <coughs> Thank you. Councilor Donovan. Yeah, I, I think the FEMA map situation is um, at that point where it's going through the publication in the uh, Federal Register. Uh, and that is, it's just a step-by-step -step process. Uh, and I think people are anxious because it's an obvious impact on uh, coastal properties in our community as well mm -hmm. as others, but, uh, but we have a fair number and so uh, people are quite legitimately interested in knowing where it's at, uh, and uh, I think patience is is really the only thing that we can offer at the present time because they will they will be holding public hearings uh, uh, for members of the public. Uh, uh, they've uh, represented that, and so that uh, uh, that's about all that can be reported at this time. Uh, most of my time has been spent working on uh, the well the ad hoc uh, animal control committee is done, but uh, continuing to try and develop uh, a compromise proposal for protecting plovers uh, and allowing dogs off leash to the greatest extent possible. Spending a lot of time on that and was very pleased at the unanimous support expressed by the council at the last meeting for those who were not um, privy to that meeting. Uh, since that last meeting, another member of the ad hoc committee uh, who strongly supports the dog's uh, privileges, Margot Hodgkins endorsed the compromise in a communication to us, and that was very nice to see because it demonstrates that we've come a long ways and we're making real progress, <coughs> and I think that's a, 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 a great position to find ourselves in. And I think it really comes a, a bit in the nick of time because uh, budget season is upon us, and we are going to be out straight with uh, of the budget process for the next uh, uh, weeks and months, Finance Committee met this week. We're going to be meeting uh, weekly during the month of April. Uh, and uh, next Wednesday, the town manager is going to present the proposed town budget uh, at a special town council meeting. So uh, uh, this is a very important time of year for the town uh, uh, as the town and school budgets are carefully analyzed that we're going to do the best we can to balance the interests of, of um, keeping services at the highest level we can while being respectful of those many taxpayers who uh, have seen their taxes go up a great deal over the last four years. Yeah, thank you. Um, my report as far as um, I just, on the uh, Transportation Committee um, was any, is there anything new on that? I was unable to attend again. Uh, Transportation Committee is now, now kind of moving beyond uh, the Oak Hill uh, area and is starting to sort out what their next priorities are. So if there are transportation issues that folks, members of the council and the public uh, would like them to look at, this is the time to kind of get it in front of them and they're going to start to prioritize their next level of work. Uh, beyond that, I know Mike Shaw attended last night, provided an update on the Pine Point Bridge replacement project. Right just slated for the fall of 2015. Um, I think that's about it. There was okay. only three members there last night, so okay. no action right. was taken. I, once again, I was got caught in that uh, work in the fire department, so I wasn't able to attend again. Um, okay, as far as uh, appointments committee meeting tonight, uh, I'd like to post uh, Bob Baisley's name to the historical preservation for a vote, I believe, is April 2nd. Mm -hmm. yes. And that will do it for um, Standing Committee's report, Town Manager's report. My heart stopped a minute when Councilor Donovan talked about just a week from now in these chambers I'll be presenting the budget. Um, it, it is a preoccupation, to say the least, of mine right, right now. Um, but things are 
shaping up. I know the superintendent will present the school budget to the school board tomorrow evening, so I anxiously await that part of the budget. I, though I don't have any involvement in the preparation of that, uh, it is nonetheless a very important part of the overall budget, so I, I wait uh, anxiously for that piece. Hopefully I get that tomorrow. And again, there will be a special public meeting on Wednesday, March 26th, uh, for me to do that presentation. Um, a couple of further comments on the flood maps. Uh, I, upon publication in the, in the um, Federal Register is when the appeal process starts, and, and I'm not aware that that has actually occurred yet, but I think it is imminent in the next several weeks. Uh, so it, it seems very clear that we'll be in the appeal period sooner than later. Uh, in preparation for that, the town has hired a consultant and will be prepared to present at least one appeal on behalf of hundreds of uh, potentially hundreds of uh, Scarborough residents and, and property owners. Uh, one thing I want to raise is that we've been very closely engaged uh, and involved with our congressional delegation, and Senator King was successful in getting a bill passed that will allow, will require FEMA to reimburse municipalities for a successful appeal. And that ends up being a pretty important deal. So to the extent that their work is inappropriate or shoddy or uh, correct, and we proved that, that point through the appeal process, all of our costs can be recouped for that effort. Uh, and so I, I very much thank Senator King's efforts in that regard, not just for sentiment, but I think it's actually a tangible benefit to us. Uh, we've tried everything in our power to sort these issues out before the appeal part period, but it appears at this point that we're not going to be able to. The other piece uh, of legislation that I think is still pending in the U.S. Congress has to do with pushing back some of the uh, flood insurance rate increases. Um, this is coincident with the map updates, if you will, but it's almost insult to injury. Uh, these are, there's a federally subsidized, if you will, national flood insurance program. Uh, the Congress last year changed that and made it more market rate, if you will. What it means for certain folks in that program is they could see as high as a tenfold increase in their premiums. So it, it really is a big deal for those uh, that are involved. Uh, that's still very much in play, um, and, and I'm not aware of any final resolution, but there is uh, pending legislation to address that issue. And lastly, just a couple of housekeeping matters. Uh, Maine DOT will be hosting a public meeting here in these chambers on April 1st, 6 p.m. It's regarding a project that they have to upgrade uh, the Route 114 and Running Hill Road intersection. For anyone that's tried to traverse that area of town, in the morning or in the evening, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a very busy area. Essentially, they'll be putting a, a slip lane, I'll call it, or an, an extra lane on 114 to allow traffic to continue to pass uh, up and down 114 as, as <coughs> cars are waiting to turn onto, one four, uh, onto Running Hill Road. Should produce some fairly significant improvements to that traffic congestion at that intersection anyway. And lastly, uh, forgive me, I don't have the date, but I know the, the Habitat Project um, We'll be holding another update meeting or a neighborhood meeting, if you will. It's certainly open to the public. Um, I, it's a date later this month, and forgive me, uh, I shouldn't have mentioned it if I don't have the date in mind, but uh, it's an effort to really re-engage the neighborhood uh, as this project is moving forward, and I'll make certain to make sure the members of the press get a copy of that uh, press release and the date so we can publicize that meeting. Uh, I'm available for questions if you have any. Any questions? <coughs> the manager. None. Okay. I guess we'll start with Councillor Benedict. Councillor comments. It's not the moment. Thank you very much. Councillor Blaze. None. Councillor St. Clair. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I am anxious. I mean, I'm, I know this is going to come to no surprise to any of you, but I'm anxious to get um, a copy of the, the ordinance. I think um, it needs to, to be looked at and gone over, and the, there's definitely going to be a, a process that goes with it, just like every other process that happens um, with ordinances and um, matters before the council. There's first reading, second reading, public discussion, um, we're still listening. I, it's, I, it's hard. It's it's hard sometimes to to get negative feedback from um, people, but you are right in the sense that we are 
you elected us into this position. Um, so I hope um, that people understand that we are listening, that it is a process. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm fr I feel frustrated. I'm frustrated again tonight, and I, I'm sure that some of you are, and I know that obviously people from the town are frustrated. Um, it's an emotional issue. Um, I think it's important to say that it's an emotional issue not just for you, but for us also, or I'll speak for myself. It's, it's an emotional issue still for me. Um, I think it's also important to know that there are other things um, as emotional and um, as involved as the dog issue is, there are other things going on in the town um, that we have to be proud of. Um, and uh, I think it's, there's, I'm always open to having discussions with people um, as far as responding to emails and things like that. Um, I think I can honestly admit I probably need to be a little better at that. Um, I'm sort of a, a talker in the sense that I'm, I do far better um, sitting down face to face with people than I do uh, communicating over email or even phone calls. I'm always open to um, a phone conversation. I don't expect everyone to agree with my position on this, um, but I still think that there can be discussions that can be had. And I still, I, I still very much believe that we can get through this process and come out with an outcome that a majority of people can can live with and accept. And I, I think this year is going to be a learning year for us. I, I don't see, even if this ordinance goes through and, and it gets passed, I, I think there's going to be bumps. I, I would expect there would be bumps. Um, you know, I still have, I have some reservations about the, the complication of it, um, but I think that with the right um, education, with enforcement, we can probably get through some of those issues. <coughs> I think we've all said this, and I think that the public has said um, would, we could pass 100 ordinances, and it's not going to matter if we don't have enforcement. So for me, that's, that's still a big piece of the puzzle. Um, and that needs to be dealt with. And I will say, too, that I have a feeling that a lot of the issues that we're having, too, aren't necessarily from Scarborough residents. And that's still a piece of that for me, too, is making sure that we're getting that education out to people that don't live in this town, that are. I, I do think it is a privilege for them to come to Scarborough and use our beaches. Um, we pay to live here. We pay our taxes. That, those, those are our beaches. And we have a right to protect those beaches, and you have a right to protect those beaches. Um, and so I hope that we don't, people don't lose that motivation. They, they, those are your beaches, and we should be proud of them. They're beautiful. I mean, it's a lot of the reason why people move here. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to, the reason they came here was those beaches. From, and, and not just dog people, um, surfers, um, horse people. I mean, there's, there's a huge slew of, of people out there. Um, so in that sense, I love when people get fired up because we should be fired up. We should want to protect those beaches. Um, this has never been, and I, from, month, from six months ago, this has never been just a dog issue for me. This has been a people issue. This has never just been a plover issue. This has been a people issue. We, we have, I know people are going to get, or every, I know like half of you are going to roll your eyes when I say this, but we have a responsibility to 20,000 people in this town who love those beaches and expect us to protect them. So I know that this process hasn't made everybody happy. It hasn't, quite frankly, it hasn't made me real happy at times. Um, but I, I, I believe in this council, and I believe that we're going to get there. And it's not, it hasn't been pretty. <laughs> I can, I'm the first person to say I've had some bad moments. But I still believe that we can get there. And I and I we owe that to the people of Scarborough. So, sorry, not really. I'm not sorry. <laughs> what is it? Hashtag sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Council Sinclair, Councilor Katerina. Uh, yeah, I, I would just um, I agree with uh, what Kate said. I get a little frustrated with people when uh, they're sending emails or talking to me and catching me on the corner or at Walgreens or wherever. Um, this is not, this is a proposal. This is a proposed ordinance at this point. It's not set in stone. It still needs to go through hearings. We need to have input. 
my grandmother always told me, if you're going to disagree with someone, please disagree with them agreeably. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can maintain some decorum and reasonable expectations in communications that go on, because the root of all issues in this world, quite frankly, is lack of communication or miscommunication. So, you know, I encourage people, as I've said, to keep communicating with us, come to the hearings, speak to us, but remember to keep it, the tone correct, because you get much further in life uh, with a correct tone uh, with things. Um, and again, remember this is proposed ordinance. It's just taking what the ad hoc committee came up with. It's been somewhat massaged. I, like Kate, am interested in seeing what the language is going to look like, and then we're going to work from there. So that's all I have to say about that. Secondly, I want to thank people again for fuel assistance bags. I have lots of them if anyone wants one. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. I'm good. I You're covered good. everything I wanted to in my previous remarks. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. I'll, um, I'll just say that um, I think that the ordinance that is uh, proposed that's coming forward needs to be put into print Mm -hmm. And the uh, public needs to see what it looks like, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I'll save my comments for once the public gets to see the full document, and um, the uh, they'll see where the errors were in, in the reporting uh, of the articles in the press, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I just had a couple of things to mention. Uh, condolences um, to Fred Honeywell and the Honeywell family and uh, Rocky Risborough and the Risborough mm -hmm. family of Rocky's passing. And I wish both families well. The, um, Jessica has the full list. Um, is, was unable, like I said, to attend tonight because of a bad cold. So um, she has that list, and she said she'll, uh, at the next meeting, she'll be reading some names for a while. And with that, um, I have a motion for an adjournment. All those in favor? Opposed? Yes. <coughs>